it's this one. Right. So I will show that again. I said for those of us that have gotten um, our work up to this point already on our computers, we just need to build something like this. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but something similar, you know, for the first one, which is the um, do not chat. We came to a new page, you know, if I delete this and, you know, do that again, I just clicked and press the delete button. We start that again, because I know I want to use the donor chat. I'm coming here to pick the donor chat. And I know that I want to compare capital revenue. So I'm clicking that here, you know, and when I click that, it's also shown on the legend here that it's been picked, you know, and I want to compare those two capital revenue by the total value. So I clicked on the total value. It brought the sum of the total value. So it summed it by default, it will sum up. So it summed everything that's under capital, everything that's under revenue. And it's used those two as a legend to, to distinguish between them, you know, and here we have that, you know, the color change and stuff we'll get into later, but let's get into how to, how to do the basics of the da dashboard, okay? And the other one, if we look into this table here, if I click on the table, you know, and we, we look at our right-hand side here, you see, it, it's showing you what and what were picked. So I've picked projects and total value, projects and total value. So how to do that? Again, we come here. I'm clicking out so that this doesn't get affected. If I click in and do anything for that here, it will be adding it or changing what we have here. And we don't want that to happen. So I, I click out and I don't have to, I don't have to always click on the visual here before I do, I pick my stuff uh, that I want to work with. So I can click out projects. So automatically it's, it's forming a table straight away, you know. So I can do projects and then the total value, which is this one. Hello, Debbie. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, let me put my phone to to silent. Um, hello, Debbie. Hello. Yes. Can you? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. So, yeah, I can hear you. Can you send the Excel, Excel um, sheet of this particular um, data? Yes. Yes. I can. I can yes. send it through now. Yeah. So. We've got that. Uh, hello, sister. Yes. Have you worked on this one yet before? This Nigeria yes. Shopee and all that. Yes, this was the one we did the last time we came on board. Um, if I remember I, I, that don't really because that that was the day for the inauguration, right? Ah, is it okay? Okay, yeah, I see. We're so, not really following. Yeah, we're not, we're really, not really following. Okay, in that case, we'll we'll have to start it from the from the very yeah. beginning. Okay. Please, okay. yeah, thanks. Right. Yeah. No, no problem at all. So I'll close. Yeah, pro this. probably you just make us to walk through it, everything, even till when you are at present. If that's right. okay, right. Yeah. Let me stop share and bring all the files up, for, so that we can. So I'll stop share for a minute. Um, and then go get the, the file out. Uh, charts, where is our chart? There we go. Do we all have our Power BI opened already? Yes. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. Bun. Soft net project funding. Sorry, I'm just looking for it. Hmm, what is the Excel file? I'm very sure I've got it. So let's cancel this. Hey, Lord, can I show you something, please? Yeah. Please um, do. Sorry, I just have to share. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, just a minute. I'll... Okay, you can I'll be there. Okay. Okay, let's see your screen. Yeah, okay, it's showing now. Uh, yes, I can see so, your screen. So you know, when I click on this, it's not showing, you know, like it only showing on the right, like projects and all that, and then including value. Mine is not showing. Okay, um, that arrow besides SoftNet right. projects funding, no, by, the, by your right, that arrow, if you click it, yeah, all of them will show mm. like, yes. If you click it again, they will collapse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So I've got the file now. I just need to send it through. Okay, it's there now, um, it's there in the chat. I'm going to stop, um, let's stop the recording now, we start recording. Okay, so if we've all got this file, please let's save it, save the file somewhere, you know, on your computer. Um, with whatever name that you will remember so that you will know which file you are bringing into your Power BI. Okay, so let's all open our Power BI and let's try, you know, that way we can get a, we can all get our hands on it. I see that that method works very well. Do we all have it saved? Everyone saved it yet? Yeah. Okay. So if you have saved it, I'm just gonna close this now because we need to close it before we can bring this in. Okay. Let's uh, do that. And now I'll open new Power BI, a new Power BI file, okay. So new so I'm expecting that we're all opening uh, our new Power BI file as well. Are we all following along or not? So that we we can always you know share our screen if we get stuck. And you know that method ensures everybody's working and getting some value. So if you are where you can reach your computer, please let's let's follow along. So we've got our Power BI opened. I'm going to close this. You know, we know what this is about. Normally I just come in and close it straight away. Okay. And now we've got our Power BI interface. 
but we want to get data into it. Okay, so who can walk me through how to get this data in? I need help, please. Get data. Okay, so, so I'm Excel, okay. yeah, so yeah. choose from I think import data from Excel. Yeah. Okay, so you can either use, because you know it's Excel, you can use the Excel workbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm very used to this because it's got so many options. So I just will go straight to get data. I believe we're all doing that. And I click on Excel workbook. So, and because I know I've saved this file uh, in desktop and uh, I, I saved it as Softnet project funding profile. That's what I used to save it. So, I clicked on it and now I'm opening it. Do we all have this navigator opening? Yeah. Okay. Is anyone stuck on this on this part? Debbie, read yeah, the chat yeah. um, message. Debbie, um, we need to drop something for you there. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Eunice. Okay, hello, Debbie. No one's here. Please, can you post it on WhatsApp? Okay. I can, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that straight away. Thank you. Okay. So. Is anyone able to, okay, actually, I should be able to do it from here. I stop share for a minute. Oh, that's when the WhatsApp got itself closed and I need it. I'm just sending it to, to our WhatsApp group now, Eunice, if you can hear me. It's been done. You need let's know in the chat if if you got it. Um, I've sent it through though. Okay. And we resume to, to our chat. Now, can we all see this screen? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay, you got it. Yeah, no problem at all. So, we went to get data, opened our Power BI, get data, we got the file. So you need to save the file first, Eunice. Save it and uh, remember where you saved it. It always helps. So we've got this navigator here and we can all you know, have a preview to see what the data would look like. You know, we can see a lot of things happening there already that needs correction. So definitely we can't load this straight, straight away. We have to transform the data first. So I'm picking, uh, checking the box, the, the, the box by the left of it, of sheet two. And we've got option to load, transform or cancel. In this case, we are going to transform it. So we transform and I'm going to need your help with this. So our transform brings us to a Power Query Editor where we can do different things. 
to our data. What's the first thing you will do to this, to this uh, data you are looking at? What's the first thing you want to do to this? Any suggestions? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the first row my header. Okay. So Mr. Ferdinand wants us to make the first row a header. Let's do that and see. So our first row as header is right here. And we can also get it from this corner here. So use first row as header. So we've done that now. <clears throat> Pardon me. And now we have year funding, Q1, April, Q2, and all of that. Okay. So we done that. What else is wrong that we need to correct with this data? What other corrections should we be looking at for this? Already I'm looking at um, the first row. That first row is all null. Okay. So it means we don't have any record at all in that first row. What can we do to take it out? So we'll yes. Remove row. We remove row. Okay. So we'll click up, then we're able to remove. Yeah. So we click on the remove rows top and it's row, a remove yeah. top row because it's the top row we want to remove. And how many rows do we want to remove from the top? One. One. So we say one and we okay that. Okay, so that problem is solved. Our problem is now solved. What more can we do? Let's let's study again before we brought it in. Actually, we should have really studied studied it well in Excel. You know, I see I see a lot of totals here. But the the bottom three rows there, it says total match, capital totals, revenue totals. You know, so a lot of totals totaling has has been brought in. And if we carry that forward, because Power BI is still going to run totals for us anyway. So it, it will be like we are doubling our total and that will not be a true reflection of our data. So Power BI, we total it and then we have our total. So that will that'll be tot a, a double of what we should be having. So that will be false data. It won't be right at all. So we want to take care of these bottom three rows as well. You know, we don't want them to go to go on with us. How should we take them off? Same way we did the first one. Okay. So we remove come to rows. remove rows. Yes. Bottom rows. So we remove bottom rows. Three. Three. We remove three. Thank you very much, Mr. Ferdinand. And we do that. And let's remember that our steps are being recorded on the applied steps. If there is anything that we don't we don't want, any step that we need to take out, we can always take it out if it's not going to affect anything, you know, on the on the applied steps there. So we, we've done a good job so far. Really good job. What more can we do? I keep strolling up and down so we can we can see, you know, what more can we do? We still got nulls. What do you think about these columns? You know, this column, I mean, after total, you know, and you, see, you remember I said something about totals because even this total, we are going to take it out. We don't want it to carry forward any totals at all. So the, it totaled at the bottom, it also totaled on the column sides as well, you know? So all we need is up to Q4, uh, quarter four from, um, we just needed from, 
quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four is all we need. So we don't need any anything from total and beyond is not really part of the data. Don't worry about these figures. And I say that confidently because I know this data. You know, sometimes it would be that you need to go back to um, uh, the, the owners of the work to ask them what these figures are about. So you know what you, you know what decision you are making about them, you know? So I want to pick from total to the last column and take them out because they won't be coming in with me. How do I do that in, in maybe two clicks? How's the best way to, to remove columns? Yeah, I mean, remove columns, we chunk it out. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, the second okay. one. Okay. Yeah. No, the remove, remove columns. columns. The one that has the red, yeah. Okay, so we come here, remove columns. Okay. Okay. Yeah, has it done anything? I think I think it has, but it removed oh, what I, I picked. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Yeah, I picked total, I believe, and it removed it removed the one that I was picking at the time. So, okay, um, let's look at the option of remove columns again. Okay, so remove columns, remove other columns. And because I picked that, all it did was, let's do it again, remove columns. So it took that particular one out, you know, but that's not what I want. I, I don't want to do each column one at a time. I want to mm -hmm. be able to work fast, efficiently, and just you know pick all of them no. in, almost like in one, two, maximum three clicks. How best do we do that? Who remembers? Which would you so want, I want to remove now? Which so I want, want to remove. So total. Column eight, column nine, going up to up to the last column, column thirteen. I want to remove all of them. Okay. So how's, how's so the quickest? Can way we can we just press? We really should. Uh, shift. Then we we'll yeah. click on the last one. Yeah. Last okay. One. So let's do that again. So this is my total. Mm. Then we we press down shift. Shift. So that picks all of them, okay. Yeah. And then you can then choose column and say, no, actually remove column, remove columns, okay. So it takes all of those out. If you don't want to use the button at the top, I'm, I'm you know, more used to right clicking. So I'll just right click and choose, you know, for example, if I was removing this, I'll just come to the top of it like that, right click, you know, and remove if I want to remove. You know, if I wanted that out, I'll just remove remove that. Okay, but I don't want that particular. Did I undo all of the all of the hard work again? I did. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, so we take those out. That's it. Okay. So what next can we do here? Now, my intention is to fill, you see where we have capital. All of these should be capital, not no, no, no. So it should be capital, road to capital, you know, up to five capital. Then from revenue down should be capital. How can we rectify that and make that happen? Anyone remembers? There is um, a function, you know, where we have, we can fill something either up or down. So under transform, so I came to transform now. There's this fill, you know? So if we click on this, we can either fill down, you know, and or we can fill up. But I need to choose this first because I was choosing this. That would be the wrong thing to do. I need to choose here because this is where I want to fill down. And then we can choose the fill down option. So I'm filling it down. And that fills out, you know, the capital and fills down the revenue. Let's look at the fill up option. I've never used that before. Um, if I wanted it to fill up, you know, so it fills revenue up, 
you know, and there was no up for capital, you know, to, to, to go up to, and he left this alone. Who knows when one might need to use that sort of function. It's just good to know that it is there, okay? But in this case, we need to fill down. So we fill down, okay. Now, it's okay to rename year. This is not year. I believe the last time we renamed these as um, cap rate. I just double click that, by the way, to rename. So we we named that cap rev because it's got capital and revenue. You can rename it as whatever you want. Um, and this is not right either. Funding is not right. This is not funding. These are names of projects, you know, so I can change that to project as well. At this point, is anyone stuck at what they are doing? Or oh, anyone's got questions at all? No? Okay. Yeah, well, cool. No, no, one is better. All right, now we are now left with this, this part of things. We can't, we can't fill this down because these are values that we can just not put anything. If I fill this down up, that's uh, 375,000 down, that's not right because um, estate management uh, at quarter two did not get that 375K. So that's not the right thing to do, okay? So there's a way we need to, so we are fine with these two, Columns, but there's a way we need to deal with this. This last uh, four columns, you know, and that is when we, the one we call on pivot. This is the point where we use the on pivot columns, you know. It's for those of us that are that are used to Excel, you know, where there's something we call pivot table. So on pivot columns just does the opposite of pivot table. You know, so let's look at how that will work. I'm going to press my control button now to pick these two because I don't want anything to happen to them. Now, the unpivot columns we need is under transform. Yeah. So if we click the arrow under unpivot columns, it's got options. It says unpivot columns. Unpivot columns would unpivot the columns that I've chosen. Let me click on that. Let's see what happens. So I'll do this. What has it done? So it's brought um, those two columns and it's turned them like in a 90 degrees direction. Okay. That's not what we want. Let's go back. Okay. Now I'll pick those two again. And I'll say on pivot other columns. Okay. So what is done is it's kept my two columns and then it's turned all of those four columns, turned them the, uh, the, like two way round or 90 degrees round, so to say, if you can imagine a turn of 90 degrees, you know, and it's brought them into this format. Remember that it was quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four that were in the as column headers. So we had four columns. It's changed them to two columns. It's made one column into all of the column headers came into one column and all of the values came into the values column. Look at this well. I'm going to undo it just so that we understand because it can be a bit, a bit confusing. Look at what this is. We got two columns here. I'll undo that and let's let's look at that in action again. Okay. So we've got capital revenue. We've got all of the projects, and we've got what happened to spendings around them from quarter one to quarter four. So this Q1 uh, and April June in bracket, Q2 July September in bracket are what we have as the headers and there's four, and then we have all these values, you know? So if we now say we are picking, we don't want this column one and column two touched. 
but we want those two others on pivot other columns and we want them to be rearranged for us. So it brings them like 90 degrees round and this is what we have. Now this is more meaningful to read. It has removed all of the nulls, not that it, it didn't bring values that are not there, there. Where there is nulls, it took them out and where there are values, it brought them for us, you know, and this is what we, what we have. So such that we have in one column, we have all of quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. Then it jumped to quarter four for eye shopping next, you know, yeah, quarter four next actually. Then quarter is, is now starting quarter one, quarter one, quarter one for all of these ones. They all they only had values in quarter one. Okay. Uh Jero, prayer, uh, uh, soft dress, hero, hero, cool up. They had values in quarter one. And then quarter two for hero cool up. So some of them that are missing values in other quarters, it just keep them out. That's what is done. So it's now easy for us to, to just rename our, uh, our, you know, column headers the way we want them to be renamed. Now, for me personally, I don't want Q1 and April, June to be together. I want Q1, the, the quarters to be in one column, and I want the months, April to June, July to September, to be in another column. So I want to separate this column basically, or split this column. How can I achieve that? Please help. Cube is length and breadth. We'll so we split the column. No, so we right click, click on top of that heading. Yeah. Then okay. we we'll right click, right -click here. Yeah. Yeah. Then we look for split column. Okay. Okay. I see split column here. Yeah, by delimiter. By delimiter. Okay. okay. So what delimiter should we use? It's trying to, to choose for us. See, it's saying custom. And because you can see a bracket here anyway, you can see bracket. So it's, it's choosing the bracket for us. But is bracket the best way to use and solve this problem? Let's have a critical look together. We are welcome to different suggestions, please. Any suggestions? We've got Q1. I can see space first and then the bracket before April to June. So how best will you be using the bracket that I su suggesting or you would rather use the space? Which one do you think would bring a better result for us? Okay, space might be yeah. better. Okay. So if if we go with space, space is part of part of what we have in the drop down already. Mm, yeah. So space. And it's asking, mm. is it the leftmost delimiter? Is it the, the, the one that's at leftmost, like here, or rightmost, or the one that's that's at the extreme right? Or every time there is space, each occurrence. Which we should be our best cho uh, choosing here, or the be best choice to to make. Is it leftmost? This is where the space is. So let's not forget. Yeah, leftmost. Okay. So if we go with leftmost, and then we okay that. Here we go. That's perfect. Thank you very much, sir. So we got our quarters, you know, we can just name these quarters. And we can say these are months. Yeah. Now again, another thing is, I really don't want these brackets. I mean, what's with the brackets in, I don't want brackets because they are not, when they were written together with the, the quarters, that was understandable. Now months are on their own, in their own, you know, buckets. We don't want the, the brackets there anymore. How can we remove the brackets, please? 
Yeah. Okay, same way. Same way. Let us put it. Let's split it. Column two. Okay. So let's split to column. We should use a delimiter. Delimiter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's already chosen bracket for us. Mm. Okay. So which option should we use here? So that means we'll do it twice then. Okay. If if once we take the left uh, the leftmost delimiter, then we need okay. to come back and do the right one. Okay. So so it's taking that out. Yeah. Okay, should we do the same for this? Yeah, it's still the same for that. So it splits split to column again. We say the limiter. And this time around is the bracket is facing the other way. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's the right now. Right. 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 Okay. So and we do that. So oh, delete the columns you don't need. Time. Okay. So we can delete. So I'm just clicking my control key. We take those columns out, you know, and that is perfect. Is there any other way we could have done this? Any other suggestions for how that could have been achieved? Apart from split column, let me right click and let's look at, I'm not gonna remove what we've done because it worked, but just so we, we get thinking about different ways of doing things. Look through these options. Is there any way that we, we could have even done it? Apart from, you know, splitting into all those columns. Replace option could have also been helpful. Replace the replace values, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's see how replace values would have, which would have worked. So I'm just gonna back backtrack course a bit back to where we started you know okay so we, we we were here and we now want to look at replace value we said okay so which value do we want to replace you know let's put it side okay. by side yeah which value the the brackets um the left and the right bracket then um, we'll leave the place with us empty Okay, so this, yeah, and the, okay. other, and the other one, I think it should work for both of them at the same time. Okay, yeah. let's try. So I put mm -hmm. them like okay. that. We say replace with nothing. Yeah. So we yeah. put nothing here. And then we say, okay. Okay, that didn't take it. it didn't out. Work. Okay, so that means it's, it has to be one. One by one. Um, okay, let's yeah. do replace value. So let's do one at a time, the first one first, replace that with nothing. Let's see, so it takes that one out. Then um, again, replace value. And then we do the close bracket, replace it with nothing. And it takes that out. You see, both ways works. And most of the time, it's not when we get the data that we jump straight into Power BI you know, and start doing it. Most of the time, you would actually look through the data and start thinking about the steps you want to use and jot steps down so that when you get into Power BI, then you can choose which one you are thinking is more efficient. Yeah, because this is small data. Um, it's very small. With anything we do with it, Power BI can handle. But at work, it could be many hundreds of thousands of rows and you, you want to help Power BI to be able to help you. So you try to reduce the number of steps that you are putting in and you are, and you are still going to achieve, you know, the right results anyway, you know? So having said that, we think through problem solving in different ways and all of the ways are right as long as they get us to, 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 they get us to the end result, okay? So is there any, any question up to this point. We, we, we need to rename this. Sheet two is not going to, to do it at all. So what name should we give this table? What name did you use?
name suggestion or any name? Uh, softness project funding uh, and BRD. Funding profile, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Okay, so that I just pressed enter to, to accept that. And we could have changed it here at the right hand side where it says under properties name. That, that could have been done there as well. Okay. Um, is that all? What else do you think could you know bring the the message really home to to people? So maybe that there. value, maybe we can change it to um, um, maybe pounds or dollars or so. Okay, so we could, the, where, that's where we use the data type, yeah. uh, the corners here, we can change it here. And because it's money we are talking about, let's use fixed decimal, you know, that is more readable as money. Uh, they don't need to be counting how many zeros, so they know if they are using millions or thousands or hundreds. So thank you very much, sir, for that for that suggestion. You know, is there any more, any more, any more we can do here before we move on? Let me quickly introduce one one um, how to add on an extra column. I think that would be an added advantage. Let's say, for instance, we want to bucket, you know, these values, you know, we want to bucket them into maybe these were values that hit the target. Maybe we've got a certain amount of money that we must spend on our projects, you know, and we want to bucket each one to maybe three buckets of maybe this one is under, under target. This one is right on target or this one is over target. Do we understand that, that uh, my explanation? Maybe at SoftNet, there's a, an amount that have been you know, high marked that this is the maximum we should be spending on our projects. Maybe that is our rule of law here. So we want to, tra to, to sort of track our projects to see, was this one right on the budget that was set? or was it under, or did we overspend? I think we can put that in as well, you know, because straight away it will let, let us see that, okay, actually when we did iShopping, we spent too much, oh, how much more did we spend? What cost it? How can we avoid that going forward? And we can also have more information on time that was spent actually, you know, how much hours or man hour or days was spent on the project. Is that what we planned when we were doing our planning? Um, if it wasn't, then what went wrong? So tracking data like this just helps to better uh, our system of working over time, you know, and, and it, it gives us proof of what we are doing as well. Okay, so very quickly, if, just if the maximum we, we like to spend on our project, the maximum is 300,000 pounds or dollars. Okay, so let's say maximum we should be spending is 300,000. Those that are below, we are going to put conditional uh, column in now. So we want to bucket them into any, any project that is below 300K, give it this name. Any project that is equal to 300K, give it this name. Any project that is above this project, give it this name. We want to do that very quickly. So because it's an additional column we are adding, we come to the fourth ribbon here called add column. We haven't used it before. I don't believe we have. So I'm coming to add column. And what add column does, is to add to your column. Actually, we have used it before. Remember, we created IDs in our first year when we did the CDs album. So we use this index column to create a from one to whatever. So 
and that's brought in an additional column. That's why it's called add column. So whatever we do under add column is going to add an extra column, you know, on the right to, to our work. So we are not going to use index column, you know, this time around. We are going to use conditional column, you know. Column from examples, custom columns, all of these we should also learn, but not today. Let's just do one today, which is the conditional column. So I'll click on conditional column and we are going to be using value. Let's look at the, the uh, dialog box of it. So add conditional column. Add a conditional column that is computed from other columns or values. So we want to use this column here. That's where the values are to compute something else. Okay. So if this, now we are starting first, actually, before I get to if, new column name. What name should I give to, with my, <clears throat> excuse me, with my explanation now, what's the best name to give to such column? Um, actual budgets. Actual budgets. Okay, okay, okay. Budgets then actual. Budgets then actual. How about targets? Okay. Yeah. How about targets? Because no. we, we are using it to track targets, isn't it? to see what's on target, what's, what's above target and what's below target. So let's use targets. And now we are here, okay? It's because I pressed some there, uh, enter, which I shouldn't have pressed, that's why that came up. But never mind, we'll, we'll get rid of it when we start. So here is what he's saying, he's asking us. He's saying, if, it's like if statement in Excel, if something is equal to something, then do this to it, okay? So if, let's look at this. Now we need to choose which column we are using. So we want to say if value, because that's what we are using, is if value is maybe equal, uh, equal at first, is equal to, then actually let's go through everything here. So if value is equal, does not equal, is greater than, so we've got all the options that we can use. If value is equal to, then we come here. Now, the condition we want to put here, it can be that we want to enter a value or we want to select a column. Select a column is if the condition is depending on, a, on another column, it will give us the option to select a column and then you can select whatever column. But in this case, we, we have a, a value in our mind and we say, let's enter or a parameter which it has grayed out. We don't have any parameter put in. So enter value is what I'll put. And I'm putting 300, 300,000, then what, I, what do I want it to do? Again, let's look at the options. Again, it says enter a value, select a column or parameter. Again, I'm entering a value. I don't want the option of select a value. So if it's that, I can put on target. So because it is equal to the target that we have set, okay? But there's more that I want to say. So I say add, I want to add more. So it's brought this extra line here. Else if it's still value, we are still on value. If value is, now I want to say less than. So is there a less than? Yes, there's an a less than, it's less than. Again, it's still 300,000. Hope that's the right number of zeros. Then if it's less than, we can say below target. 
Okay. And the last one. So I still add a close. Now I don't have to do this third one because actually let, let me remove it first, delete this last part because this else, this last one here would take care of everything that doesn't fall into these two groups. So this is what I'm saying. The new name of my column is, the name of my new column rather is targets. And this is what I want you to do to that column. If the value is equal to 300K, put on targets there. Else, if the value is less than 300K below target, which means every other thing that's not taken care of is, is not you know, obeying these conditions, then I can put the third, the last, you know, which is above target, the last uh, condition above target. So this, this, that, that makes three conditions. If it's equals to 300K, put on target for me. If it's uh, less than, put below target. Every other thing that doesn't fall into these two groups means they, it will be more than or greater than 300K. So you can call those ones above target. Let's okay that and see what it does. And then it adds on our next column. And now let's see, value here is 175K, less than 300K, so below target. This one is 375K, which is greater than the 300K we gave it. So above target, 290K below target. And it keeps doing that. And we can have more conditions if we want. If I wanted to edit that condition and, and you know, do other stuff with it or change from 300K, I can come to the wheel here, our last step where we have the uh, added conditional column. We can just click on that, uh, that wheel and there was that thing that looks like, like settings and it brings it here and you can change whatever you need to change. You can change this from 300K to 500K, whatever it is that your, your company or your requirement tells you to do, you know, and that does that. Is that part clear at all? Does yeah, anyone? Yes. Should we redo that part? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear, okay. So I, I'm assuming that we all, all 11 of us here have gotten to this stage in today's work, anyone that hasn't, please share your screen and let us know what the problem is so that we can sort it and then we can move on from it for, for next class. Yeah, so how, how do you insert that um, <laughs> dollars there? You know, I don't know, I, I, I was one that asked, asked to do it. So how did you do it? Yes, this, this corner here, yeah. all this corner. That's where you can change the type of data. So we just click on this corner there and choose yes. whatever we want. And it was this second one for money, for money, fixed decimal number is the right one for money. Yeah. If I want to change it back to whole number, it becomes what it was before. Okay. Just one, two, three. You okay. know. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so if we have all gotten to this point, then let's close and apply. So now it's applying the changes we have made and bringing it to Power BI. Okay, it's taking forever. There we go. So it's appeared on this right hand side here. And if we expand that, we have all the columns there. If we look through, this is the data, the table page. That's the table we brought in in this format. And then 
we've got the the whole this is where the relationships are formed for it's just one table we have got so it's just on its own no need for any relationship to be formed and then we said about uh, start we start to build the visual that we wanted the the reason for doing all of that work was to present uh, the, the report better for for people to understand for stakeholders to understand by using things that are more interactive you know so we've got the cap rev sorry how did you get it please okay i'm going to remove that so i clicked on the donut chart the chart i want to use actually it doesn't have to be the donut chart but that's the one i'm using then i know what i want to put in it is i want to represent my cap rev which is this, so I clicked on it. In terms of the uh, value, which is that. Yeah. Sometimes you can drag it. So um, let me remove this. That's not the only way to do it. I'll remove that again. Sometimes you can just pick. So I'm just gonna pick without choosing anything at all. So, but I know these are the two parameters I want to use. So see what it has done, it has brought it as a table. So if I don't choose anything, it will bring it as, as a table like this. But I can always change that table to whatever I want here, yeah? So it is picked already. If I don't pick it, it won't change anything. So let's pick that and look at what different charts say about, you know, and I can drag up and down. Now, this is my disturbed bar chart. And this is the way it's pre presenting it. And we can see straight away that this is the taller bar or the longer one, the capital, and that is the revenue there. So that shows straight away without me looking through, you know, too many details. And if I don't want that format, I can use this, the popular uh, stacked column chart as well. This is the stacked bar chart, stacked column chart. You know, so if we change it to that, it's not much of a difference. You know, let's keep going. Not all charts are, are right for every data. Like this line chart is not showing me what I want to see at all. So line chart is not right for this particular data compared to the way this, this one showed it, you know. So again, area chart wasn't right. Stacked uh, area chart was not right. So bar chart, uh, uh, column chart, or pie chart, or the donut chart, those are the best to you to use for if you are showing comparing two values. You know, you want to see how much one is compared to the other. Those charts are the right ones that you want to go for, and that's why I chose that. Yeah. Any more questions at all? If I chose a, a table and um, I decided to look through all the projects in terms of their values, you know, that gives me that. If I decide, I'm clicking out. If I decided that, okay, not many people would really, really look at this table two times. And a few people will because they are really interested in numbers. Few people will, but you've got it there for whoever, whatever they are, you know. So I'm clicking now, but I need provision for someone else who wouldn't really look at projects in that regard. So I may decide to look at uh, donut chart. I don't have to use that, but it's there as an option. And I'm still going to do projects and values, you know, and it's divided them into uh, slices of the of the donut, and it's given information con concerning them. Okay, and if I want this to be even more interactive, I come still come back here. There's something we call the slicer. This slicer is what we use to make it interactive. Compare different. Maybe I want to compare quarters. So in my slicer, which is picked, I come to quarters. I want to see what happened in each quarter. 
So quarter one, I can see this was what happened. Quarter two, and it keeps going on and on like that, you know. And I can. Slazer is where, please. Sorry. It's right um, here, number okay, two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if that's not the only slides I want, I want to see in terms of targets, because we did the target as well, you know, I just need to click slicer again and look at the targets, which one was on target, which was below target, you know, in each quarter as well. So above target, I can see these are the ones that chopped most of the money in terms of tables and in terms of uh, looking at each project and cap rev as well you know and the below targets are these ones that we didn't spend too much on and the on targets these are exactly the 300k one uh, which i believe is just one of them that fall into that category and we can see akian which is also akian here is the only one and it fell under revenue as well you know so that's the essence of you know bucketing that in into targets and if people are thinking, which one is quarter one or quarter two, I can bring in months as their, whatever it is that you are comfortable to explain, you know, to the people, you know, so, and all these are inter interacting with each and uh, each, with one another in different ways. If you don't want them to interact, we will look into that. How to change this, this uh, background and every, the color, to customize it to exactly what you want. I think we will look at that next and some other calculations that we can be bringing in. Maybe we should do that next. Um, but um, yes, is there any question at all at this point? Any question at all? Um, not really a, a question, just a contribution. Uh, I wanted to ask that when you were creating the conditional column um, from the power query, that it's also something we can create using uh, the DAX function, which is sometimes recommended if you are having um, playing around with large data. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to mention in that. Then also, I want to also mention that uh, when building visuals, it's also good to use the explicit measures rather than using the implicit measures. I don't know whether you've uh, talked about it before now. So those are some of the things I also want just to add that building measures that we should not rely on whatever um, we have been uh, the Power BI has all to generate for us in terms of maybe some account. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe when, I don't know if, um, um you have actually talked about that before now yeah i don't know no, no we haven't sir we haven't gotten to measures and uh dax and you know all of that at all oh. um i just thought we should do the simple bits first before we start getting into the deep water so that we don't scare people away um oh, okay okay that, that's the yeah that and that's why we are using all these simple data at the moment I, I think when people are very comfortable doing these simple bits then building on is easier um so we haven't gone gone into the so so let's just say we are on the beginning or intro side of power bi at the moment so when we have gotten everybody on board very well and confidently as well then we can proceed to you know, build all the all the different measures that are there, and you know, just look. Um, I got some business requirements um, and uh, some data that I found on Udemy, which I believe we can really interact with in in terms of building our model uh, better, and in terms of looking at, um, like we said yesterday night, looking at uh, solving problem, looking at using these tools as problem solving tools rather than just coming to just lend them. So we come with the with the mindset of, okay, there's a problem, you know, that needs to be solved. How do I approach it using using Power BI for, for Power BI class and other tools for the classes that we normally have? That's the that's the idea. But we are going to need you, you know, I, I always say that we are going to need you with all this as we go on. You know, Mr. Azim, 
Yes, of course. My, in fact, I've also got a lot of um, you know requirement times of project we can work on together end to end. Yeah, I've I've already I've been compiling that now. So anytime we can start, then I'll be happy to Yay. um to come on board fully. Yay! Thank you, thank you so very 